Hey, good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you for attending our breakout session, Design Print Ride. My name's Mark. And I'm Brandon. And both of us are 3D printing applications engineers here with Hawk Ridge. First, before we get started with this, I want to have a huge thank out, uh, shout out to HP for sponsoring our breakout session. This particular breakout session is going to utilize their printers in order to print the bindings that we ultimately show within this video. Now, this series was actually filmed all the way back in March with a series of, of weeks left before the actual ski season ended. And Brandon, it was a hectic time doing this filming. We did a lot in a short period of time. Yeah, so one of the cool things about this project, and we wanted to kind of talk to you guys about this before we actually uh, kind of rolled the film, um, was that we kind of came up with this idea in midwinter and, you know, really put this together, um, the, the actual bindings together in a matter of like, I think two or three weeks from design to actually having something in hand, um, at least at the base level. And then we ended up getting the filming in like in the last week or two of ski season, pretty much. <laughs> so it was a, it was pretty fast a testament to the technology for sure. Um, speaking of the, speaking of the technology, um, in terms of 3d printing, I wanted to launch a quick poll to see how many, uh, 3d printing users we have in this, uh, in this audience here. There's an option for HP as well, since they're, uh, this is the primary technology open for, a. Uh, for a few more seconds. I'm interested um, to see if there is any HP people in here. Uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of those systems out there. And you yeah. can say HP too, if you're, uh, you know, if, you, if you're getting parts made with an HP. <laughs> um, we're going to go ahead and end that poll and see. Um, yeah, lots of, wow, lots a lot of 3D printing users. Um, for majority 3D printing users, that's really good. Um, that's a few HP cool. users as well, so that's really good to see. Um, Very those promising. of you that aren't using 3D printing, um, I think you're going to want to after this. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you know, the one thing, it's very promising to see how many people have adopted 3D printing. Yes. But after this uh, video, hopefully we uh, push some to the dark side and, you know, adopt HP for some of that prototyping or even end use parts that they're using 3D printing for, you know, currently. Yeah, absolutely. Um, again, like this, th we did this to kind of highlight some of the technologies here we have here at Hawkridge Systems, but namely our additive manufacturing and post-processing technologies through uh, HP and AMT. Um, this stuff's come a long way, and it really just opens up a lot of freedom in your in your design. Plus, it was a uh, it was really 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 fun to uh, kind of put this together and get out on the slopes a little bit. And speaking of that, I have a have another poll for you guys just because I want to inundate you. But uh, we're gonna launch this and see how many of you ski and snowboard. Um, you have an option to choose there. Uh, it, make it a little more fun to see um, who uh, who's doing this year. We'll leave it open for a few more seconds. Ah, it looks like it's actually pretty close at the moment. I'm actually surprised, but you know, Brandon, I think the skiers have it on this one. Let's see. Um, we're uh, usually usually the case, especially in the Northwest. Uh, but we're going to end it here now. Um, three, two, one. Yeah, we have more. Have a little more skiers, but it's pretty close. Um, well, especially for you, especially for you skiers. The whole premise behind this particular video. Brandon and I are always excited when it comes to ski season and we start seeing all the ski and snowboard videos coming out, you know, the Warren Miller and all those different events. And we wanted to see and bring that excitement to 3D printing, design, manufacturing, and incorporate that into skiing. And that's exactly what we did with this video. And Brandon, the skiing there was pretty, pretty epic. Yeah, it was, it was pretty fun. It's really fun to uh, see Mark uh, go down this. But just to comment on this project again, like um, we should, we're probably going to get started here soon with it. Um, but you guys are going to see that we did not take it easy on these things. Um, it's not like we're, you know, taking these to the slopes and putting them down a green run. I think you guys will be pretty impressed with this. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I, I am. And we work uh, in you know 3D printing itself. Now, that being said, this particular presentation, we're taking a slightly different approach. We want to make this as interactive as possible. So we're going to premiere our video here. But Brandon and I are actually going to be inside of the chat dialog boxes answering any of the questions. And first of all, yes, every single shot that you'll see on Mountain is of the 3D printed bindings. Yep, absolutely. Um, all the binding shots, other than the few shots where I'm in the shot accidentally, uh, are, uh, are shot with those bindings. They're real. Um, believe, believe me, uh, our video editing skills are not that good. Um, 
And then just a comment as well, um, when we get into this, uh, you guys can feel free to chat with each other in the chat box, but I'm putting a question in the Q&A tab all the way on the right hand side of the pane right now. Um, this is where you should uh, put your questions to be answered um, by us. And uh, we'll also be answering questions live at the end. Yeah. Well, with that, are we ready to premiere this, Brand? Yeah, I think we're ready to go. Awesome. Let's go ahead and show the video. Everyone, here's Design Print Ride. The world of product development is ever evolving. The need to quickly design and iterate a part to bring to market is more important now than ever. As technology changes, so does the way we design products. One of the main disruptors of the industry is additive manufacturing. So you might ask, why am I standing here on the side of a mountain right now? Well, for one, it's a beautiful day to be out on the slopes, but I'm also in field product testing a brand new pair of snowboard bindings that we recently designed and printed. And this upcoming hour, we'll take you through this product's entire journey from start to finish, where we'll scan an old pair of snowboard bindings, use SolidWorks to design a new pair off of the old pair, test print some iterations and see what works and doesn't, and then finalize a design, print them out, vapor smooth them, and finally have some fun on the slopes, testing them out in person. So with that, I'm actually gonna strap back into my board and meet Brandon down in the studio to begin this webinar. Good morning, everyone. And thanks for taking some time out of your day to attend this webinar. My name is Brandon Brown. And on the mountain was Mark Dolinar, and we are both 3D printing application engineers at Hawk Ridge Systems. At Hawk Ridge Systems, we provide designers, engineers, and manufacturers with everything they need to take their designs from simple concepts to end use products. We have locations across the country in 20 unique office regions with a large staff of experienced engineers on call to help you ensure that you get the most out of the solutions we provide. You may know Hawk Ridge Systems as a solid or tree seller primarily, but we offer much more than software. Our additive manufacturing solutions include fused filament fabrication, continuous filament fabrication, and multi-jet fusion 3D printers produced by our partners, Mark Forge and HP. A few weeks ago, Mark and I were brainstorming ideas of how to best utilize these printers. So Mark, how was your day on the mountain? You know, it was great. The snow rode amazing, but kind of running into an issue. Really, uh, what's going on? Well, my bindings just aren't behaving the way I expect them to. Oh, that's a, that's kind of unfortunate. Yeah, on some of the steeper sections, they're just not stiff enough to instill confidence to actually charge hard. Huh, have you, uh, have you tried anything else? Any other bindings? Well, I've been looking around. I just haven't found any on the market I really like. Man, uh, 
you know, we both have mechanical engineering degrees. Uh, you know, we could take a stab building another pair of bindings. It's not a bad idea. We have the knowledge and yep. we have the tools. We have a, we have a access to some pretty impressive tools in all honesty. I think we could get this done. Let's give it a go. Let's do it. With that, an idea was born. We have access to printers that are capable of creating high quality end use parts in full color with a myriad of material options. What better way to utilize these machines than to create our own designs? But instead of just designing a one-off pair of snowboard bindings, we wanted to act as if we were a brand new company coming to market. This meant that we wouldn't have limited resources for testing and a short period of time to get our product on store shelves. In a scenario like this, it's easy to overlook additive manufacturing and revert to traditional manufacturing techniques like injection molding. However, even though a pair of bindings would ultimately be injection molded, printing our bindings to reflect the final design will save a lot of time. Instead of tying up limited resources in expensive molds and tools, we decided to bridge the gap between prototyping and mass production with the help of additive manufacturing. This will free up cash flow and our new company while also giving us the flexibility to change our designs if needed to fix any issues that might arise. Today, we will cover the entire process from idea to finished part. How was the test run? You know what? It went amazing. I'm more than impressed with how these bindings performed. They're extremely stiff and responsive on the steeper sections while also giving me the flex to absorb some of the bigger impacts. What types of uh, terrain were you taking this down? Well, initially I was a little hesitant and I started off on some blues just to become a little bit familiar with the bindings. Once I found no problems, I actually began to upgrade the runs and I eventually began to take them down some double blacks and even hit a few hips. You took those down double blacks. Yeah, it's truly amazing the kind of parts that come off of these HP printers. They behave just like injection molded parts, but without the design constraints you would typically have with injection molding. Do you think these need any more work or can we start selling them? You know, no, honestly, they more than exceed my expectations. And we'll show some writing footage at the end of this webinar of me on the mountain with these actual bindings. I'm sure the audience would absolutely love to see that, but I'm sure they're also thinking, how did we pull this off? How did we produce these bindings? Well, let's show them the journey as to how these bindings came to be. The first thing we needed to determine were the bindings characteristics. Being that I'm a skier and Mark is a boarder, we'll let him describe the characteristics of the bindings. The characteristics of a pair of snowboard bindings are critical. Right now, I'm standing on the side of an extremely steep slope, and I need these bindings to perform up to par. That means the bindings themselves have to be stiff and responsive to give me the confidence to hit terrain like this. Yet, at the same point in time, I need some sort of a cushioning effect when I go off of the larger drops or I hit choppy sections. So it's gonna be crucial that our design accommodates both of those characteristics with the design and the materials that we choose to use in this final product. Once we determine the bindings characteristics, we can begin the design process. We first began designing our bindings based off an old pair that Mark had. On the existing pair, the base is made from sheet metal and the back is injection molded. These two pieces are tied together with a set of bolts and a plastic spacer. Now, the problem that I ran into with these bindings was how often these plastic pieces would crack. When using traditional manufacturing, you're often limited in your design choices based on available manufacturing capabilities. Now, additive manufacturing does not have the same design set of manufacturing constraints that subtractive or formative processes would have. This is due to the nature of multi-jet fusion. Complex designs can easily be produced with little need to worry about the orientation or post-processing. The beauty of additive is the ability to print without the need to worry about complexity. This is great as it offers designers unrivaled design freedom, but realistically, our bindings will ultimately be mass produced. So we're taking advantage of this technology to quickly and inexpensively iterate our designs until it's perfected and we're willing to commit to creating molds to accomplish higher production volumes. This approach will be critical to our business model early on, as we won't have to worry about tying up our capital resources in expensive tools or molds, and instead can focus on other areas of our business that directly produce sales. 
Ultimately, these bindings will be injection molded once we begin producing at higher volume. But we're planning to give our customers the opportunity to customize their bindings by taking advantage of the new TPA material that HP just recently released to allow the rider to adjust the responsiveness based on their needs. So what's the plan to get these started? Well, first, let's grab the critical dimensions off the faces and use those to reference our parts and begin the modeling. After we discussed our initial plans, Mark gave me his old pair of bindings that we could use as a reference to begin our design. At first glance, I knew grabbing measurements with traditional tools would be extremely time consuming and error prone. So I decided to use our Creaform HandyScan Black Elite 3D Scanner. Hawkridge recently partnered with Creaform and we are very excited to be able to offer these scanners to our customers. The HandyScan, HandyScan Black Elite features unrivaled speed, accuracy, and simplicity with the ability to capture high quality scan data regardless of the environment or part geometry. The HandyScan achieves an accuracy of up to 25 microns at a measurement rate of up to 1.3 million data points per second. With this portable scanner, a part of up to four meters in size can easily be scanned and imported into your modeling software of choice. Within an hour, I had usable scan data in VX model, which allowed me to repair and align the mesh data quickly and easily. Once Brandon completed the scan, we were left with a mesh model we could use to reference key interface services between the binding and the boot. This is where the real fun began. Hawkridge Systems has represented SOLIDWORKS since 1996. We are the experts in the industry with over 100 experienced engineers on staff to provide guidance and top quality training and support. Modeling with mesh data can often be challenging due to the large number of entities and the inability to use parametric tools to manipulate it. There are many ways to tackle working with scan data from mesh modeling tools to quickly extracting services and curves. Scanda3D, which automates the extraction process, or the Geomagix add-in for SOLIDWORKS when working with complex scan data. For this project, we were looking to reference the contact surfaces between the boot and the binding to ensure proper riding stance and proper boot fit. The rest of the scan was irrelevant since we intended to design the rest of the binding from scratch. Because of this, I decided to use a few standard tools in SOLIDWORKS that would help create the necessary geometry that we would ultimately base the model off of. Now, traditionally, it is difficult to select or reference a graphics body. However, a few years ago, SOLIDWORKS introduced the slicing tool that traces graphics bodies, mesh B-rep bodies, and SOLIDWORKS B-rep geometry. The slicing tool can be found by going to Insert and Slicing. From there, we can select the base, slicing, plane, and specify any additional planes we would like to create. Once the offset for the planes has been entered, SOLIDWORKS will automatically create 2D sketches that are at the intersection of the source geometry and the reference plane. In our case, we were able to create slices of the critical geometry that we could reference in the future. Once the sketches have been created and cleaned up, Smooth parametric geometry can quickly and easily be generated by using the surface loft tool between each of the sketch sections. With SOLIDWORKS surface modeling, we can easily loft between one slice and another, trim away sections with the trim tool, and finally merge the body together with the knit tool. SOLIDWORKS makes the modeling process fast and easy. In little time, the scan data was converted, the bindings were modeled, and our prototype was ready to be made. One of the main advantages of adopting additive technology is just how quickly a part can go from the design phase to the testing phase. In our case, we planned on using our 580 multi-jet fusion printer. This machine offers an all-in-one solution that allows the designer to simply send the file to the printer and create the part. The designer even has the option of printing the bindings in full color if they choose. For our initial design, we plan to use these bindings for our infill testing market research, and product promotions. We were really asking a lot of these prototype parts. Now, to get the dynamic graphics onto the bindings, we use SOLIDWORKS due to its ease of use. Simply right-click on the part's body or face, which you wish to apply the appearance to, go to the Advanced tab, and choose a new appearance. Any JPEG or PNG file will work. Then simply apply, rotate, and size the file appropriately directly to your design. You went through those steps pretty quick. 
I did, but don't worry if you missed anything. Hawkridge Systems offers many training classes to get you up to speed and improve your skill set within SOLIDWORKS. These offerings are available through either live, in-person, or online classes, as well as our new training catalog that is offered through Solid Professor. Now that we have a CAD model of the bindings, we have multiple options for creating a prototype. Anything from injection molding, casting, and even machining are on the table. But that's where HP's line of multi-jet fusion 3D printers really shine. HP introduced the MJF technology back in 2017 with the introduction of the 4200 series printer. This technology differs from other additive manufacturing methods, namely in how layers of the parts are fused together. Traditionally, most printers fuse apart point by point, which increases print time and decreases strength. However, HP's MJF parts are fused sheet by sheet all at once, allowing these parts to obtain almost isotropic characteristics. Another advantage of printing with a powder bed method like MJF is the ability to print without being constrained by support material. Just like with snow, a large mass can be supported above a volume of tiny, loose particles. The printers work by first depositing a thin layer of powder directly over the build platform in 80 micron layers. Next, a layer of fusing and detailing agent are applied to the shape of the part. Then, when the layer is exposed to the fusing lamp, the fusing agent will react and harden, whereas the detailing agent creates a crisp edge around the part itself. This process is repeated layer by layer until the build is complete. Once the job is done, all that is left to do is to unpack the build and media blast the remaining powder off your parts, at which point you are left with beautiful, functional parts. Typically, a full job, including cooling and cleaning, takes about 18 hours. HP offers three lines of their printers. The 300 series, which is designed for small prototyping runs and is available on a pay-as-you-go plan called 3DOS Plus. They also offer the 500 series, which is designed for prototyping and contains a larger build volume, faster print speed, and the option of printing in full color. The 42 and 5200 series are both designed for full production. The 42 delivers unrivaled speed and print capacity, while the 52 offers a higher build temperature for more available materials, single pass print mode, and optional natural cooling units. For this particular project, we chose our 580 printer because of its ability to print in full color. Using the SOLIDWORKS CAD model, I was able to create a build by simply utilizing the built-in build manager and placing the bindings in the middle of the volume. We were able to get the bindings out of the printer the next day and begin testing our current design. We found this to be extremely beneficial as we tested multiple parts to see how strong they would be and how they would fit with each other and the boot. Because of this, we were able to quickly and easily iterate through our design. Now, in our case, our original design had a backstrap design that was quite different than the one you see here. The reason being, when I was riding them on the side of the mountain, I noticed that it gave me too much flex as I was going down the hill. For me personally, the terrain I like to hit requires me to have a stiff pair of bindings so that they're fast and responsive when going down this terrain. By allowing us to iterate and print the design and infield test, we were able to redesign them to accommodate for these characteristics. This is one of the main advantages of additive manufacturing, the ability to quickly and easily iterate your designs. Exactly, that falls under the concept of failing forward. There's certain things that we can design on a computer and certain things that we can test through an FEA analysis. However, the feel and the responsiveness of a pair of bindings such as this can't be done unless we get our hands dirty and get out on the mountain. With additive manufacturing, it's possible to be in the office one day and on the slopes validating your designs the next day. We eventually settled on our Y backstrap design because it gave us the strength and stiffness we needed to make a great pair of bindings. Now we could have left the bindings as is, but applying a post-process operation to the existing print allows the bindings to match the surface finish we would expect from an injection mold. Vapor smoothing is going to be an excellent option in this scenario. Not only can we keep testing the parts that we have, but we can also use them in marketing campaigns, and we can bridge the space between prototyping and injection molding. Earlier this year, we announced a new partnership with AMT Technologies. AMT offers a wide array of post-processing technologies, from depowdering solutions to automated vapor smoothing equipment. We decided that vapor smoothing 
would be the, an excellent option for our bindings because it would allow the surfaces to be completely sealed and waterproof on the mountain. It also enhances the color and feel of our parts, which allows them to compete in texture and appearance against injection molded parts. Currently, our business plan is to produce these as injection molded parts. However, we don't want to commit to creating a mold until the orders are in place. So this is a critical step to our design that provides a quality surface finish and also allows us the flexibility to quickly change our product based around consumer needs. AMT offers two vapor smoothing machines, the Post Pro and the Post Pro Mini. These machines smooth the parts by spraying them with a vaporized solvent that reorders the surface molecules without affecting the overall part dimensions. The AMT machines are a closed loop system, meaning that once the easy to insert cartridges are installed, all that is left to do is enter the settings for the part run. During the polishing process, any rough areas or layer lines that are left over from the printing are smoothed out. The thermodynamic conditions inside of the machines can be easily adjusted depending on the part specification, surface finish, and mechanical characteristics required. The machine itself can store up to 100 of these individual preset values, allowing for continuous production in combination with HP printers. The HP parts as they come off the printer have a great surface finish and excellent mechanical characteristics, but the vapor smoothing really takes these parts to the next level. The vapor smooth bindings worked exceptionally well. However, as I rode throughout the day, I began to realize that the bindings didn't provide the cushioning I really wanted from them. Traditionally, binding pads are made of an EVA foam or something similar. When we looked at commercially available options, however, none really fit our design or our performance criteria, so we decided to start looking in another direction. The other option was creating our own. However, the mold cost alone would have wiped out our budget. TPA is a new offering with HP from Vonic. We decided to choose this material because it has excellent cold weather performance characteristics. We could have easily just modeled generic pads, but the advantage with 3D printing the pads is the ability to incorporate a lattice structure into the design that gives the pads the response that we need. Latticing can be done inside of a parametric tool like SOLIDWORKS, but we prefer to use materialized magics as it offers many great solutions that can be combined to improve our 3D printed parts and workflow. Magix is an excellent tool that we use to fix STLs and 3MF files, pack our builds, and send them directly to the printer. Magix also includes the functionality to create lattice structures. In Magix, by navigating to the Build tab and clicking on the Structures tool, we can quickly and easily apply a lattice structure directly to our part. The Structures tool contains a wide variety of different patterns that are both adjustable and customizable to our application. Magix can do so much more than just manipulate a model's geometry. It also features an excellent build packing tool. Inside of Magix, we can easily import our individual build volume, add any desired parts, and allow Magix to automatically pack the build for us. Magix geometry-based packing allows for higher density packs in less time, greatly improving the efficiency of MJF machines. Avonix TPA is available on the 4200 Industrial Series printer. These machines offer unrivaled capacity and a 35% increase in build volume over the 500 series. And not only that, but they're designed to run continuously with a removable build unit that allows one print to complete and the next to start in a matter of minutes, enabling production rates that begin to compete with injection molding. Working with PPA is slightly different than working with PA12. While the parts are both packed in powder, PA12 parts are unpacked cool while TPA parts are unpacked while they are still warm. Once the parts were unpacked, we had flexible and responsive TPA parts that were ready to be installed on our bindings. This brings up a great question that is often asked when dealing with additive technology. How do we combine different parts? Well, in some cases, we may need to split a part up due to the size or geometry limitations of the machine, or in our case, when we're using two different types of materials. There are multiple options for joining parts, from interference fits, joinery like you'd see in woodworking, fasteners, or even adhesives. In our case, we went with adhesives, since they are easy to use with higher production volumes, they're lighter, and easy to install. There are multiple adhesive options that will work well in this application, 
including epoxy and Loctite 3D adhesive. In our testing, we found the E6000 adhesive to be more than capable of holding the pads in place. Once we had the pads in place, all that was left to do was ride them. I agree. Let's ride. When we first got to the mountain, we wanted to try a few easy runs first before we stepped up to something more difficult. I followed closely behind Mark to ensure that the bindings were performing as expected and that nothing was going wrong. Initially, I was a bit nervous to take these bindings down the mountain. Now, I was confident that the material would hold up, but I need to make sure that our design was appropriate. So we started off riding with some blues, and then throughout the day, as I progressively became more confident with how the bindings performed, I upped the runs until eventually we made it down some dumbbell blacks with these bindings. We tested these bindings in the last week of March, so we were skiing in spring conditions. When we first got to the resort on our first day of testing, we found the snow was really, really tough, choppy, and iced over, bulletproof as they say. If the bindings would have failed, they would have failed on that day. However, as we kept testing and days went by, the snow got softer and softer and we started venturing into more serious terrain. Every time I pushed the bindings, they responded great and really instilled a high confidence in not only our design, but the materials themselves. They really felt like a pair of high-end snowboard bindings. Personally, I've worked with 3D printers for many, many years, my entire career to be exact, and I've never seen anything like this. Watching Mark hit those jumps, get seconds of hang time in the air, and go down double black diamond ski runs on icy snow absolutely defied my expectations. These things are incredible, and I didn't expect them to be this good. There are some things that you can test through analysis. However, fit and feel needs to be tested in person. Nothing beats the ability to print out your new part and drive directly up to the mountain to test it out. There really isn't any other manufacturing technology that's quite like HP's multi-jet fusion technology. The fact that we're sitting on the side of a mountain testing a pair of 3D printed snowboard bindings only a few days after we printed and vapor smoothed them is a testament to that fact. Can you believe how fast we were able to create a working part from our idea? No, in all honesty, I still cannot believe this. Even just a few years ago, this would not have been possible. You're right. And these aren't just a pair of visual prototypes. I rode these hard and they showed no signs of letting up. You did, and that snow was tough. It was really heavy and choppy. So these bindings really took a beating. They really did. And we rode multiple days on them. I wouldn't hesitate to keep riding them the rest of the season. We don't want to hide anything. So what you see now are the bindings after multiple days of riding. The color held up phenomenally and we received numerous compliments on the design. The TPA outperformed our expectations as well. Adding the lattice structure to these pads really helped to create a cushioning effect, and the pads are no worse for the wear. The parts themselves are showing no signs of failure, and Mark was not gentle with them in the slightest. No, I wasn't, and towards the end, they felt just like a pair of regular bindings you grab off the shelf. Being that we built these so quickly, what do you think we should design next, Mark? You know, honestly, I think the sky's the limit. With the freedom to design and print a part that's held up this well, it really opens the doors for all sorts of designs. Can you imagine what our customers would build if they had access to this technology in-house? No, 
but I bet they could. The world of product design is rapidly changing, and the technology solutions provided by Hawkridge Systems is fueling that change. In this webinar, we covered 3D scanning with Creaform 3D scanners, CAD modeling with SolidWorks, 3D printing with HP, texturing with Materialize, and post-processing with AMT. Hawkridge Systems provides all the necessary tools to take your idea to market. If you're interested in learning more about any of these technologies, click on the link below. I think there's a few hours left today. You want to get some more test turns in? Sure do. Let's go do it. Well, Brandon, can you believe that uh, we were able to pull off uh, such an ambitious project in such a short period of time? <laughs> uh, you know, I definitely thought we'd get it done, but not to that level of success. Um, yeah, we still, uh, and, and that is true, like in the video, we still actually have the bindings in our showroom. So if you're ever near our, uh, you know, one of our events or um, our uh, Post Falls um, or Redmond showrooms, we do have these bindings still. Um, if you're ever curious about uh, curious about seeing these in person, because they are real and they are strong. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, this is one of the things that we hear a lot. I mean, Brandon and I are constantly in meetings uh, talking about the strength and what different material options there are. And especially with this technology, it keeps expanding rapidly. Uh, HP is really at the forefront, trying to add more and more material options to make them stronger or give you different characteristics. That TPA material was brand new this year. And you know what? We were able to put it directly into use to act as some sort of a like absorption of shocks. Yeah, uh, just, to, just to say too, I'm seeing a lot of questions about like, uh, you know, material capabilities and such. That's one of the biggest things in additive manufacturing right now. Not as on, It's not only quality advancements, uh, reliability advancements, and um, other related advancements in the machine space, but a lot of it is related to mat just material advancements, material science advancements. Um, there are a lot of new materials in the market that can re really shatter your expectations of what's possible with this technology, um, whether it be with HP or um, our other partner, Mark Forge. Those, but just in general, as an industry, um, that and you know that is really one of the driving factors of this kind of renaissance we're seeing in the application spaces for this technology. Yeah, and, and Brandon, it looks like we're getting some questions in. So let's uh, answer some of them. Um, the first one was from uh, Leah, and she was actually asking about the lattice structure that we used inside of those uh, bindings. Mm -hmm. Now, that particular lattice structure, we used a tool called Materialize Magix. Uh, Magix is actually a really powerful tool that you can use for, you know, modeling and changing some STL objects. Uh, we here at Hawkridge Systems use this primarily as kind of a build packing tool, but it also has a latticing feature. Uh, basically the way we were able to use it is we were able to put a solid body inside, say what the lattice structure was, and it automatically generated it for us. Now yeah. that tool, oh yeah, sorry, Brent. Oh, I was gonna say, um, let, me, let me kind of illustrate the difference here. So I actually did a did a project a while back. Um, I'm just going to share my screen quickly. Um, if you guys can can see that there, um, that's kind of something you can expect to make with SolidWorks. And SolidWorks is a really capable tool, but even patterns like that um, kind of get difficult. It's very repetitive. Um, if you have any degree of uh, you know complexity that's not just like wrapping it around a you know a cylinder or you know with a few simple cuts, it starts to get kind of unruly. Um, so purpose built tools like the Magix tool are kind of kind of where a lot of this is. Um, are a lot of these lattice structures are made? Yeah, no, exactly. And this is one of those things, uh, especially when you're working with a powder bed method like the HPs. Um, typically, you're not even concerned with a lattice structure with FDM printing because yeah. there's so many supports. You're trying to figure out how to remove. The beauty mm -hmm. with powder, there's no supports. You take the parts mm -hmm. out of the printer, and all of a sudden, you have them in your hands, ready to go. Yeah, and um, and the the thing that I'll actually take that uh, opportunity to contrast this technology with like an FFF process. Um, typically with an FFF process, they they will print with a um, with an infill anyways, which you could consider kind of a lattice structure, just internal to the actual part itself. 
Um, and there is th there are things you can do like larger lattice structures in some cases with those technologies, but um, in general, lattice structures are really well suited to um, like either laser powder bed fusion um, or powder bed fusion, multi jet fusion. Um, uh, really, technologies with a very fine um, detail capability, and they generally suit those processes for a lot of other reasons as well. It's not as necessary in uh, FDM or FFF. Yep. Yep, and looking at some of the other questions here, and also, guys, I'll just note that um, if you uh, really, really want to have a question answered, make sure to put it in the Q&A tab, because um, we might miss it in the chat with the number of things going on in there. Um, but looking down here, if you are doing a simulation on the HP multi-jet fusion part, what would the yield strength uh, be? Um, so we can actually, if you're really interested in that, there is some material data sheets we can get. Mark, I don't know if you have those handy. Um, uh, I don't have them on me right now. Uh, but if you reach out um, through the chat portal, we can actually send you a full material spec sheet um, of, you know, any of the materials that HP has to offer. Um, and it's really, really powerful, especially when you're looking at, you know, you know, new parts, new designs, and trying to incorporate a new manufacturing approach into them. Yeah, and um, I'm seeing some other, uh, j just to kind of... Um go on to the next question here. If you had to use support material, what's your preferred method to remove it without any damage to your part? The nice thing, and I'll answer this in two ways, the nice thing about HP is you don't need support material. Um, with plastic powder bed fusion technologies, um, they don't require support material, particularly multi-jet fusion. Um, so you have a lot of design freedom. There are some design constraints, but they're pretty limited um, relative to even some other additive processes. And um, but with regards to other, um, we actually just did a presentation on this relative to Mark Forge's CFR process. Um, regards to other methods in general, the best strategy to um, remove removing supports is to not have supports. Um, so designing your parts with self-supporting geometry or overhang angles uh, generally around the 45 degree range, if you can. When it comes to removing supports, um, I assume you're talking potentially about a FDM type, FFF type methods, having them easily exposable, exposed and not too small where you can grab them with a, you know, like a pick or a pair of needle nose pliers is a really good starting point. Um, that, and there are a few other strategies as well. Um, if you want to chat, uh, get a little more info, info on this, check out our YouTube channel and uh, um, as well as some of our other partner resources. Um, we can definitely get those to you if you reach out to us. Yeah. And, you know, jumping into the uh, the Q&A panel, um, there's one from Chris. Uh, he says, uh, you mentioned that you went with a powder bed method with the vapor post-processing to make the parts more similar to an injection molded part with regards to finish. Uh, is there any reason you would go with powder bed over an SLA approach? Well, you know, the one big benefit when you're working with powder bed fusion, the MJF HP technology, is you're actually centering these sheets layer by layer. So as they're going across, every single piece of your part will be centered in one layer, both at the height that you're printing and a few layers deeper due to the heat that's generated in the printing process. Usually when you're working with like an SLA approach, it's kind of like a point by point. Now this is where HP gets a lot of their strength and that's why these parts are almost isotropic in strength and characteristics. With these 3D printed snowboard bindings, we had really no idea of exactly what direction a force would be if I was in the air, if I was turning. And that's where the MJF technology would really be beneficial. Oh, oh I think uh, we, we lost your audio, Bryn. Sorry, I was typing. I have a very <laughs> loud keyboard and it tends to uh, intrude on presentations. Um, so uh, looking, we got that one. We're going to answer this one. So Randolph here asked a question. He said um, he had a golf club head 3D scanned, and he was wondering if, it, if metal uh, 3D printing would be a good, um, and I'm omitting details from the question here, uh, Randolph. Um, but he, he was asking, hey, you know, could I prototype this with metal 3D printing? And the answer is absolutely. Um, well, it might not exhibit the, just to dive into metal printing a little bit, because we do have a metal printer. It's called the Mark Forest Metal X. Um, they don't exactly mimic rot properties or like uh, for, they're kind of kind of in their own realm. It's based on metal injection molding. Um, for a prototype, it's absolutely a great way to go, because having having one machined, knowing golf clubs would be rather, uh, rather expensive, knowing that geometry um, 
metal 3D printing of all sorts, I think would be a great way, great thing to look at there. Yep. Uh, so next Hopefully one we that have- that answers your question. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Well, so the next one we have is actually from Joshua. Uh, he says he's read HP is working on the metal side as well as a binder jet system, like an MJF hybrid. Um, so now this, there is uh, some talk that HP is coming out with this. Uh, there are no official dates of this release as of yet. Uh, so yes, they have been rumored to be working on this, but as of yet, there is nothing. Um, like Brandon said, we do offer a metal printer that is the Mark Forge Metal X. Um, it's a really capable printer, uh, especially when you're working with part sizes. So that's something I would definitely recommend looking at as the time being, since there is no timeline for HPS yes. technology. And just to, just to comment on that as well, um, metal printing is um, as you're probably aware, a very complicated process, um, especially with the, the metal jet. If it does come around, it's going to involve powdered metals, um, which is great if you're a production facility that can handle that and you have a good application for it. But um, as of now, the Metal X is a little more accessible. And if you do reach out to us and you're curious about learning more, um, we can definitely deep dive into your application and take a look and kind of guide you in general. And that's something I generally want to say. If you guys have um, in-depth questions, uh, definitely reach out to the Hawkridge team and we can, we can, you know, about applications, you're wondering if it'll work for you. Um, that's something we can, that's the whole reason we, our team exists is to help you guys out in that front. Yeah. Um, so it looks like we have another question. Uh, Alea is asking about the printing technology. Um, do you know anywhere that uh, one can print these types of components on demand? Um, Brandon? We actually support quite a number of different yes. print bureaus. Many. Um, <laughs> very many. Um, if, if you want, um, feel free to reach out to one of our account uh, representatives. Um, we have Tristan on the chat. We also have Devin on the chat. Uh, both of them are a great deal of resources, and they can point you to a print bureau that's nearby in order to print these components. Uh, yep. Yeah, you're correct. Some of these printers do cost quite a bit of money. If you only want one or two parts, it makes a lot of sense to go to a print bureau to get those parts created. Yep. And um, another thing here before we uh, we go on, because I I kind of kind of noticed that um, we are coming up on the end of our presentation. I just wanted to uh, mention to you guys that um, we are. You guys are. There's an ending general session here in the next like two minutes. You guys might want to start jumping over to that. You'll have about ten minutes. Um, I'm going to actually post um, the video series that we did for this um, called Design Print Ride um, in the chat here, really fast, so you guys can uh, see the in-depth videos of each of these technologies. A few of them are already in there, but it's a playlist on YouTube. You guys can get into and it should answer a lot of these questions about these products. It's like a deep dive on each specific section of the process. Um, just dropped it in the chat for you guys there. Um, other than that, we have about a minute till it ends. We'll answer a few more questions, but uh, as you guys start to leave, thank you so much for coming to this. Um, we really enjoyed showing this to you and uh, hope you all have a great day. With that being said, um, let's keep answering questions until we're, we're kicked out. <laughs> <laughs> So, Brandon, it looks like at the moment we should be caught up on questions itself. Um, but, yeah, I mean, was there anything that you really learned from this project as a whole when we were, you know, going from designing to printing a brand new part? Um, I mean, this sounds cliche, but how capable some of this is. I mean, I've, I've done some, I've worked on some kind of, you know, hairy applications that are a little more like, okay, we're definitely pushing the boundaries of this technology, but... Um, this is definitely up there with those, um, and it's a it's a lot of it was a lot of fun to work on. What about you, Mark? Yeah, no, I I, I think it's the same boat. I mean, the, the one big takeaway when we were first pitching this, uh, both of us thought we were just going to write a couple of blues and you know kind of see yeah. how the bindings would work. Do a video, um, yeah, a video like three minutes, five minutes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I I was actually blown away by just how strong the material actually was. I mean, we were you know, constantly testing and going a little bit harder and harder. And, you know, eventually, you know, we were pretty confident just writing the bindings as normal bindings, which yep. is amazing to say with a 3D printed part. Absolutely. And it uh, looks like we're about to uh, end the presentation here in about 10 seconds. So again, wanted to thank you all for coming and, uh, and hope you enjoy the rest of the conference and the rest of the day.